Hey everybody, so I've been cooped up so much, not doing anything, I had some motivation to work on my amp. I also hadn't drank coffee since, I think, the day after Christmas, so I finally drank some coffee today, so I'm all wired. <laughs> my voice is still hoarse, I've been talking on the phone a lot, doesn't help. So what I did was installed the output coax, I'll show you in a second, put a spark gap in, I'm going to put one in on the other side also use the SFT 600 coax so I haven't set the final setting for the spark gap but I will with my high pot tester over there and then I'll use a feeler automotive feeler gauge used for setting uh, points on an old distributor or whatever to set it in here so I use these stainless steel bullet looking things they came out of a Henry RF generator I have a whole bunch um, so I attach one to the wall, and there's an internal tooth crush washer on both sides, the outer side and the inner side, so that's not going anywhere. Uh, two 632 screws holding the aluminum bracket. I didn't have any copper right angle material, but this is fine. It's nice and rigid. So I have a brass screw with an internal tooth crush washer going through the aluminum, and then another internal tooth crush washer on the other side with a nut. And this is really tight. And then a, another nut over here with an internal tooth brass crush washer between the nut and the stainless thing. So basically I loosen this nut and then I can move this either way. And then when I get this gap set, I tighten up on the nut and I actually slotted this screw to get this to perfectly line up. It might change a hair when I tighten all these bolts down for the capacitor connection. So this is a temporary solder joint. So I can pull this out, I can pull that off, and I still need to solder the strap that goes from the load cap over capacitor over to the band switch common. And then the end of the output network will also connect to it, the, uh, the end of the 160 meter coil. So use copper strap, soldered really well. Uh, there's almost an inch here of exposed Teflon. Same over here, and copper strap soldered really well, goes through the really flexible, this is thicker copper, this is thin, a little bit thinner copper so it would move around so there's no stress on the vacuum uh, relay terminals. Uh, I crimped it over, you know, uh, yeah, crimped it over and soldered it really well, squeezed it, you know, so it's like a U shape, and I used the SF, uh, I'm sorry, the, um, late it's like nine something here I use the uh, small coax like RG whatever 400 or whatever equivalent the, the stranded type and um, you know uh, put a strap around the uh, normally closed connection and uh, there was a hole punched in it and the center connector went through wrapped around so it's all soldered together and then stripped so, you know, Teflon, and uh, this is uh, the ground is stripped back, and it's soldered to a ground terminal right here, wrapped around, all soldered, and it goes through the floor. I used a few, uh, you know, the floor so thick, I didn't have any grommets that would go such through such a thick uh, wall, you know, uh, so, you know, wall thickness, so um, I ended up... Uh, just using the Teflon, three layers, and goes through the hole. And then I have the uh, positive side of the relay coil coils that are in series, because they're 12 volt relays, these are brand new that I had. Um, goes through there also. And uh, they're all both heat shrunk together. So I'll, I'll flip it over and show you the bottom. Be right back. Okay, so you can see where it comes through, through the triple layer of heat shrink. And then I have a piece of ferrite with the positive lead from the RJTBs. Loop through it one time. And it goes over to a Teflon standoff with a screw through it, securing it to the wall. Point on one cap at that junction to ground to bypass any RF that makes its way down here. And then at that same junction, it will connect to the input. RJ1A and also another RJ1A for the 
which isn't installed yet for the um, which will actually be in the bottom for the uh, bias switching. And I'll have that circuit to speed up the relays just like it did in the other amplifier, the 6 meter amp. There's the coax, see? And ground connection over here, where it's stripped back. Goes through that gap. And it connects to the normally closed connection of the RJ1A. So I'll check the feed through SWR, and if I have to, I will add a capacitor between the normally closed connection and ground to correct it. But this will this is only going up to 15 meters. I might it might be really low. Um, the unshielded lead length uh, changes the impedance a little bit, and then you can end up with a higher feed through SWR. But uh, I kept the unshielded lead length as short as possible, so. Um, it's easy to correct if I have to. I'll just add a little uh, doorknob in there or something. So uh, here are the um, things I was talking about. These ones are actually two of the longer ones. I have you know a couple more. You know, I have some more that are a little bit shorter. So pretty nifty. Okay, so yeah, my hands are all hooked up. Okay, so. Lots more to do, but I'm getting there little by little. Next will be the uh, 160 coil, and I'll uh, parallel with contacts on the band switch with strap going to folding over when coming up, and you know, you'll see it. And like I said, another spark gap is going on the other side. So. I believe I said so it's late I get up really early and I am tired hopefully this voice issue will go away tomorrow but uh, it's hard not to talk I have people calling all day wanting to send amps in and spend uh, a bunch of time with each person on the phone so but well thanks for watching website is amprepairguy.com Phone number is 203-892-4119. Please like, share, and subscribe. If you subscribe, the next video I put on of this, you'll get to see it. And if you look back at my videos, they're, you know, the, to show the progress from pretty much the beginning till now. Minus the socket was already installed and the you know, chimney was put in. But, um, so thanks for watching. I will be back very, I'll be back this week with a lot of ham amplifiers. So, 73.